Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Uh, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed my copy of Necromunda Underhive has arrived. Yay! Or, or should that be? Right, okay. Shut up. Right, yeah, excited. Very, very happy to have had this arrive in the post today. So I thought I would uh, quickly open the box and take a quick look inside. I've already removed the shrink wrap because um, that's always a pain on camera. And I've actually um, opened the rules book as well. Um, so I have already lifted this lid once. And um, so my my sense of awe as I open the box will be entirely faked for your benefit. Ooh. How did I do? Was it good? All right. Uh, this box weighs a ton it is full of good stuff um i'm gonna put the whole thing over over there for a minute but yeah weighs a ton plastic templates look at that these are the uh the same ones uh sort of that you used in the old versions of, of 40k and also shadow war armageddon but in orange and um yeah, they always, they're, they're quite brittle, um, the frames they come on. They always seem to come snapped. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about that, really. Frames. Miniatures. Uh, this is the Goliath Sprue. You get two of them. Um, and, and Goliath's the big chunky guys. And there's a lot of fiddly little bits. Um, this is not your Shade Spire push fit miniatures. This is not your easy build Warhammer 40k miniatures. This is full customization options. Um, it's designed for hobbyists. Uh, there's loads of gun options. Um, as I understand it, the game includes um, uh, pre built gangers so that you can assemble them as per their instructions to get uh, an up and running gang as as per their specifications or you can go your own way and do your own thing because they've included blank cards for for writing out your own your own creations where are the heads oh. there are the faces and yes the hair pieces are separate it's a little odd um Goliaths are big chunky guys who mainly use sort of stubbers and shotguns and big heavy um, tools sort of reappropriated from industrial facilities and used to clonk people in the head. And obviously this weapon has, has a big skull. And there's this weapon, by the way, I think is hilarious because obviously you've got the skull head and then the blade of, of the renderizer uh, and, and it looks like a, a punk mohawk. Which is obviously, that's the Goliath thing, to have the, the whole Mohawk thing going on. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, it's, I always have trouble showing off stuff like this on camera because I don't really know where where to leave the camera lingering so that you can actually get a sense of what's on there. Um, yeah, a little bit more intimidating than, than something like Shade Spire. But lots of customization options for for those, those people that really enjoy building their own unique characters. You get two of those glass sprues, they're exactly the same. And then you get two um, Escher sprues. And this, this this is the girl power team. These are the uh, the the only sort of all female gang in the game. And um, I'm very pleased that the Games Workshop put an all-female gang in the box. I think that is that's a, a good thing for them to have done. Um, it's slightly offset by the fact that um, you know they're they're kind of like eighties punk punk rocker types with high heels and boob tubes and stuff, and they don't really look like they're fit for a fight. But um, Games Workshop were, I, I guess, a little bit hamstrung in that. You know, this is this is Necromunda, and the gangs have a, an iconic status, and people are expecting their their new 
gangs to look like those those defined um, predetermined interpretations so um, so yeah they, they've kind of gone gone all out and gone with it and and yeah I mean it's in some in some ways it's it's not ideal it's not the most progressive interpretation of women in a combat game um, but at the same hand I do I do enjoy the fact that it sort of wholeheartedly embraces the cheesiness of it I mean they've they've actually um, some some characters have platform shoes but some of them actually have high heels they've the, the sculptors have gone all out just to go right okay this is supposed to be sort of a glam punk group with massive hair and bright gaudy neon clothes so let's go for it let's let's go all out and just make them as ridiculous as possible two of those and then get some cool terrain um you get a gribbly a gribbly that comes out of a sewer lots of broken barriers um sort of relics things for operating doors loot boxes um EA just pricked their ears up when I said that. Um, yeah, barricades, booby traps, lids to loot boxes. I think most people are really sick of hearing about loot boxes by now. And um, big, chunky sort of blast doors. Which are very nice and really, really heavy, really, really thick. That's surprising. I mean, they could have, they could have half-assed that. They could have got away with putting cardboard ones in, um, kind of like Space Hulk doors. But they've they've gone all out and, and done done big, heavy plastic ones, and they're really nice, really, really nice. Yeah, good weight to that. Um. Games Workshop are learning. Between the miniatures and all of the cardboard components, they have a sheet of card. And um, they've gone, hey, why not stick the building instructions on there? So they've put the building instructions on the sheet of card, which, so it's, it's doubling, d double duty. It's partly to, um, uh, to, to protect the cardboard components and partly to guide you through assembling your gangs. Uh, the, these instructions are specifically for the named gangers that they have included um, in the game so you've got all the other options for other things you want to do um, but if you want to build like um, a predefined warband this is the instructions to follow and I like that because um, previous games workshop games like Betrayal of Kalth, uh, Burning of Prospero didn't give you any kind of guidelines in, in that they in that regard they gave you all of the components and just said build them out you want and there was no kind of guiding process that said Really, you want this build for the Terminators because they're very good at this. And you want this build for at least one squad of your Space Marines. None of that. They just basically say, do what you want. So, but this time, they've, they've got the option to do what you want. But they've also got these, these guidelines so that you can create something that at least you know will be functional. And I was going to say balanced, but who knows if it's balanced or not. But at least you know you're going to have a functioning warband that sort of operates to... Um, that particular warband style of play. By the way, molded bases with, with detailing. Really nice. That was a good thing. And massive dice. Um, really, really big and incredibly gaudy. Um, I think. I think the Eshers may have had something to do with the uh, design of these dice. But yeah, they're big. Um, Games Workshop have a tendency to put um, uh, small dice and things like 40k. Um, but these are nice, nice big dice. Um, they're bigger than the Shade Spire dice. Very chunky. Very nice. I like that a lot. Look, there's a broken bone symbol because that's what that is all about. This is the rule book. It is also mahusive. And we're not going to go through it all. Um, it's got a massive great big section in the front of a fluff. It's 
So there's lots of lots of fluff about the Necrom underworld, what's going on with the Underhive. Lots of cool pictures. Um, lots and lots of um, sort of profile pictures of particular characters. This is Dead Eye. This is Belladonna. You see what I mean about the, the ridiculousness of the the Escher gangers. Um, yeah, I, I, you're gonna you're gonna fall down on one side of the fence or the other, I guess, with that. And of course, the Goliaths are just big, beefy blokes. Um, characteristics, and profiles, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we're into the rules and things. Now, this um, game has all the rules for playing on map tiles. They, they've included nine big map tiles for creating um, battlefields. If you want to use 3D terrain, you have to buy the... Gang War Supplement, which has all the rules for jumping and climbing and all that sort of stuff. But this game just covers playing on a 2D board. So it's it's like a complete contained board game. It also doesn't have all the full campaign rules, which are, again are in the Gang War Supplement. So if you buy this box, um, it's £75 retail, I believe. I pay £60 online. You get a complete board game experience. But if you want to go um, and sort of recreate that classic Necromunda, you're going to need to buy the Gang War supplement and um, obviously get some 3D terrain if you don't already have it. Um, that's cool stuff. Toxic Sludge. Toxic Sludge and Loot. That's what Necromunda is all about. Um, obviously, there's all the weapon profiles and everything else. It's a really nicely produced book and quite weighty. Um, considerably more weighty than the quite flimsy gang war supplement. Uh, there we go. Games Workshop also included um, crib sheets, cheat sheets. That was good of them. A lot of the weight of the game, of the game box, is taken up by the sheets um, oh look you can see me reflected in there um, let's take a sheet wrap off because you don't want to see me you want to see what's going on with these boards all right uh, tokens. These are um, line of sight arcs, and these are ductways, I believe, um, which have special rules in the game for crawling through and stuff like that. Uh, cool tokens. Um, decent thickness. Yep. It's all right. Standard, I would say. Um, and then you've got these really cool double-sided boards. Um, they have squares on them, but this is not a movement by square game. Um, this is movement by range ruler. So don't be fooled into thinking it is a classic move on a grid board game. It is not. Oh, that's a, a pit and some sludge. I guess that's that toxic sludge. Um, really nice boards. Um, they're quite moody. Um, with some obstructed areas. Yeah, it's cool. Lots of good stuff. Um, one would assume the red line indicates a wall. So anyway, there is nine of those, and they're double-sided. So you've got Plenty of customization options for your battlefield. And the final thing in the box is the deck of cards. Um, there are tactics cards. You get um, uh, two decks of ten generic tactic cards and 
four gang specific tactic cards I believe um, and at the start of a scenario um, the scenario will tell you how many you can draw and um, they give you sort of one-off benefits during the course of the game like they might let you be able to open a door or give one of your characters uh, some makeshift armor that they've cobbled together from the battlefield um, uh, and Games Workshop have released um, sort of gang specific decks of tactics cards which have extra tactics in for people who want to have more options but I think you know there's 40, 14 cards per side in here which I think is a good start for figuring out whether you like the game enough to, to go on and get more and um, yeah blank character cards so you can create your own characters I didn't open these let's see if I can just open the cards because I'm interested to know I'm not going to be able to open it yeah sorry for anybody wearing headphones for me going yeah in a very dramatic way um they're nice enough um and there's a whole bunch of those and then and then these are the named characters bone snapper Nox the ripper classic games workshop um subtlety with the names there drago um and yeah we'll just have a look at one of these tactics Play this card when activating a fighter with a weapon that is out of ammo. One of the fighter's weapons is automatically reloaded at the cost of one action. No ammo check is required. So there you go. It's just sort of that sort of one-off benefit. Which is a new thing for this version of Necromunda. And there, there we go. That's the contents of the box. Um, as, as I showed you, I also purchased the... Gang War Supplement, which has the rules for 3D terrain. Um, it also has the rules for running a campaign, and um, it has sort of alternative rules for building your Goliath and Escher gangs for a campaign. Because the uh, gang construction rules in the base game don't don't prepare a gang for a an extended campaign. Um, it only has Goliath and Escher in. Games Workshop have released a PDF online which has the other major gangs in it, um, the old classics, so you get Dilak and Vansar and Orlok and the other ones. So those rules are available um, online for free, um, but this book only has Goliath and Escher in, which is fine because um, I was always a Goliath guy back in the day, um, and I, I should imagine I will continue to be so. And that's it. Um, that's all I've got to say for now. Sorry for going on a little bit. Um, uh, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you soon. Thanks everybody. Bye bye.